a common physical chemistry laboratory looking at thermodynamics or thermochemistry will often use a constant volume calorimeter to look at the heat of combustion of materials, which has a lot of relation in food science and thermochemistry of reaction. Um, and a common apparatus is shown here. Uh, this is affectionately called a constant volume oxygen calorimeter or a bomb calorimeter. Um, you load your sample in the stainless steel vial, usually as a pellet or into a container where you put a liquid. You put leads in there so that you can ignite it. You close the whole thing up. You then um, put oxygen in there. So you flush out the other gases and put 20 to 40 atmospheres of oxygen, which will be an excess of oxygen. Um, then you hook up leads to an iron wire so that you can ignite uh, or uh, do a combustion reaction of this. Before you do that, you take this entire apparatus and put it into this container, typically filled with water. So you'll often have several liters of water in here. You'll stir that water. You'll be measuring its temperature. And this is so that you can ignite your sample. So the common thing, once you have your sample loaded, oxygen atmosphere loaded in here, this put into the container of water. This whole thing is in a insulated vessel, so it's meant to be as adiabatic as possible. Um, then what you're typically doing is measuring the temperature of um, the material in here, which is the water bath plus um, your sample in the stainless steel vessel. You get a baseline measurement, you ignite your sample, and then you measure as a function of time how the temperature changes until it equilibrates again. And then from doing a standard material, typically benzoic acid, to get what the heat capacity of the calorimeter is, then from then on you can use that change in temperature to deduce what the heat of the reaction, and in this case, the reaction is a combustion reaction. So for online students, doing um, this remotely uh, because of all the manual steps uh, is quite difficult, but we have simulators for this that are actually quite realistic in the data they give you. So here we've gone to a website where there's a freely accessible um, simulated experiment for bomb calorimetry. And they show a kind of a cartoon gimmick of what I just described, where you have your sample in here, you ignite it in an atmosphere of oxygen, and then you watch the temperature change. And uh, they give very detailed discussion and instructions for how to use this and um, the constants. And so let's just quickly run through this. So you would typically um, choose a sample. You would usually start with benzoic acid as your standard, and you would do just that. You would take it to the balance. You would weigh out a certain amount, press it into a pellet. And so you can change what this amount is. You typically want it kind of, kind of as large as possible. So this gives you um, a specific weight of your sample. You start with a certain temperature of your water, the water that you put into the vessel. So we could change this, say 24.3. Um, you can't change what the temperature, the lab temperature is, or what the weight of the iron wire is. And this gives you your initial conditions. So you can put these in. Now you can ignite your sample. This would be what you would realistically do once you have the apparatus put together. And once you do that, it, unlike having to take a measurement as a function of time, so doing this 20 plus minute experiment, it gives you the simulated data all at once. And you can view that data here. So we can view this data and we can even take this data right here and copy it uh, to um, 
a text file or copy it into uh, Excel or a spreadsheet or a graphing thing. And this is um, representative of actual data you would get from a realistic bomb calorimeter like that one I showed you before. So it gives you beyond what you would do in an experiment, which is to collect the data I just showed. Um, you can also do some of the analysis here. So you can um, extrapolate and get what the change in temperature here is. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now you can see it's extrapolating the initial temperature and the final temperature. And you can move this around to get what the change in temperature is from the ignition of this or the combustion of benzoic acid. Now, these were the initial parameters here. Now you'll see that this is the wire, the weight of the wire after you ignited the sample, meaning it didn't all combust and you'll need to take it into account for that. And the amount that did combust, what heat was given off from it. And um, and you can, of course, view the data and do this type of extrapolation and prediction yourself, your own data analysis, but this gives you a way to um, record the final temperature and the initial temperature, and like I said, move it around where you want kind of an equal area here and here to extrapolate what the delta T is from the final to the initial. Now, once you've done this for, say, benzoic acid, this, as you'll see from the instructions, will allow you to get the um, heat of the calorimeter or basically allow you to calibrate the calorimeter for a specific bomb and a specific amount of water in there, etc. So now we can um, go and Every time you load this on the website, and it's discussed, this is discussed in the instructions, every time you reload it or pull it up in a new web browser, it will redo uh, some of the calibration. So you have to do this every time you come in. So it really is meant to emulate what you would do in real experiments, where you would use one calorimeter. You would start by calibrating it with benzoic acid, and now we would choose a different sample that we want to measure. For um, physical chemistry students at ASU, we usually ask that they run naphthalene, which is a very common material to run, and then one, in a sense, fatty acid, one of these fatty acids over here, and one of these bottom sugars. Because one of the most common things is to understand the amount of calories or the heat uh, involved from uh, fats versus sugars. And this gives a kind of a natural real world comparison of where um, these type of thermodynamics becomes important. So um, picking a sugar over here, common ones like sucrose or glucose, and then a fatty acid as shown over on the left. So we could pick something like naphthalene. And again, we could now take that to the balance and we could use the parameters that comes or we could change those. And again, we can ignite that sample and get the data um, here where we could use that data. And this again is you would as a function of time and after you ignite it, um, you measure the temperature in increments. So this is very realistic, um, both in a time perspective, the weights of the samples uh, and uh, most parameters. And these are discussed in here that it is using 30 atmospheres of oxygen, two liters of water. These are all very common um, parameters used in experimental apparatus. Now what I want to say from here, so you could do now quickly what would take you several hours in the lab. You could choose several samples and get the data within five or 10 minutes, what would take you a couple hours um, in a laboratory, and get a sense for realistic simulations and realistic data that you would get from these materials. From here, I would say the most common thing is then to take some of this data and start some analysis. So I've created 
a Google Sheet here where I've taken data from this calorimeter. And you'll see I started with benzoic acid and these were the parameters that it gave you. These were the initial ones. I um, recorded what the weight I used was, what the water temperature is, what the lab temperature was, and what the initial wire weight was, what the final wire weight was. Um, and then I extrapolated it and got the initial and final temperature from the analysis that it did. And then I did this, as you can see, for naphthalene, um, a fatty acid, and a sugar. Uh, and so this gives me all of the data from the simulation. And now I can use that data to get the heat of combustion. I've written the most general form here where you have not only a carbohydrate, but you could also potentially have nitrogen in there as well. And this would be generally the formula you would um, decompose or you would react any carbohydrate or any carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen system with oxygen. That's the com um, combustion and it should form CO2 uh, water, at, uh, liquid water. And if you have any nitrogen in your materials, then it would form N2 gas. These are the constants or given um, from the bomb calorimetry simulation constants right here. This is using this general formula above the materials I ran where I calculated my own molecular weight, even though it's given on the simulator by putting in these values here. Uh, this just makes it easy to kind of use this formula. And then um, this is the data where it always gives the same time points out to 18 minutes. And I um, the data it gave, I pasted here into these blocks for benzoic acid, naphthalene, um, uh, one fatty acid, and a sugar, glucose. And I plotted that here. So I was able to take the individual plots it did and make kind of a combined plot of it, where you can see, in a sense, which ones have uh, more heat given off, which causes a larger change in temperature. And then to be precise here, I went ahead and, you know, calculated the change in temperature for, uh, so I used benzoic acid to give me, to calculate um, the, the calorimeter constant. And then I used that same, that calorimeter constant, which is the same while you stay in the same browser and do a series of measurements. It'll change every time you reload it. Uh, but I did these all at once and I measured naphthalene, and then I could use that calibration constant and get the amount of the change in temperature, which is related to the energy released, which is um, related to the enthalpy of combustion. And so I was able to, from this data and from that simulation, uh, give me a calculated heat of combustion or the enthalpy of combustion for each of these three that I simulated. And then I can compare that to literature values from NIST and see how those compare. And you'll see that there is some randomness. Every time you reload, you will get a different, slightly different calibration constant, and it'll give you slightly different uh, variables where there is, in a sense, some randomization in here, which will cause different amounts of um, error in your measurements. So it really does fairly well simulate this, and I hope this spreadsheet shows you how you would take that simulated data and put it into a spreadsheet that is almost indistinguishable from what you would do if you did this as an on-ground in-lab experiment. Okay, I hope this video was instructive to help you get started with bomb calorimetry simulation and convince you that this is an um, excellent way to quickly go through and get a fairly realistic sense of the data and the process um, that you would do in doing uh, laboratory bomb calorimetry experiments to measure the heat of combustion of organic materials. Thanks.